Hey guys, B Snappy here. I'm here with Emma McDonald. She's the pilot of this Ferrari of the skies. All right, in, in a car, it's just a turn of a key to start it. Where's the start one on here? We've got a number of start switches on this one. Oh, <laughs> the start okay. sequence is going to yeah. go in order. Oh. We've got a lot of switches here that are um, our engine switches, which have to be in the right position for us to start it. Oh. One, so we get the right amount of fuel in. Yeah. Two, so we get the, the right amount of spark in. And then we're controlling power with these guys. So after you take off, how quick do you just give it to the autopilot? Um, so our, our standard procedure, we've got to be on, on track pretty well before we start engaging our autopilot and we're above yeah. um, 2,000 feet AGL. Personally, I like to fly it for a little bit longer. Yeah, get a yeah. bit of a feel of it. Emma, online, I've seen this plane go inverted. As an aerobatics pilot, do you ever get tempted to do that? <laughs> especially because they've proven this aeroplane can do it yeah it is tempting but we said this aeroplane's not um authorized for aerobatics but the one that you see yeah. do aerobatics has has an stc approved for that here in australia they had it here for the avalon air show where they were doing a demo yeah. of how nimble this aeroplane is yeah. and it, it certainly is it it's capable of doing the loops and barrel rolls no problems at all got a high g loading and it is very responsive so matt actually um thinks that this aeroplane is the next best thing to his F-18 Hornet. We've got Oxymasks on board as well. Yeah. So we've got them there. So if you want to see what the screens look like, you can flip the black switch on. Okay. Oh, whoa. So we'll get, end up getting this screen come up. Oh, yeah. And this is our engine screen. So this is all our engine parameters up here for number one and number two. They all, they all move. So if, as the engine is running, we'll have our white marker is our ITT, which is our exhaust temperature. Then we've got the torque of the engine, which is our green one. Yeah. And we've got our red markers as well here at the top that tell us where our limits are. And then we've also got NG, which is the speed of the internal parts of the engine yep. and our propeller speed as well. So this is the main screen you're looking at during the takeoff process? That's correct, yeah. We're wanting to make sure our engines are making all the power that they need and we're not over temping our, our engines either. Mm -hmm. And then we've got air speeds and everything will be on these ones, which we can turn on. If you want to flick this one all the way to the forward position. Okay. So you sort of might have to pull it and then lift. Oh, okay. There you go. And that's going to bring online the other screens, which has all our information there for our height, speeds, direction, heading. That's and crazy. Track. It's like, a bit like a spaceship, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> flight simulator is never going to be the same. You'll have to download this one on your flight sim. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Our engines have something unique as well that we um, most um, turboprops don't have is an engine cooling switch. So we actually got to turn the engine cooling on yeah. to be able to um, pass air over the oil coolers. So we've got um, radar on board as well, which um, we probably wouldn't be able to put on with um, people out the front here, but we can turn radar on. So it'll do a radar sweep um, for each side. So it'll sweep one direction. Yeah. which will show up on your screen and then it'll sweep the other direction which will show up on my screen so it allows us to sweep both sides we also got terrain avoidance as well so it'll, it'll let us know if we're getting near terrain or what the terrain looks like ahead of us so we can set a radar up and see where terrain is so you can actually see where the hills are when you turn on the battery or this switch right here do you pop up to all other airplanes that you're still on the ground but you're turned on yeah so our TCAS or our um traffic advisory so yeah. we we send out a, a signal as soon as we're turned on here yeah. but we're not going to be active because yeah. we've got our weight on wheel switch active so it means yeah. we're still on the ground it's turned our switch off so it's not actually sending ah. our position out until we take off yeah as soon as the wheels come off the ground then it shows where our position is but we can see where everyone else is as well through this as well mm -hmm. so so which one's the horn here <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't have a horn i wish we had one yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, why do you have a keypad and all this down here? So this is our GPS. So this is what we call an FMS. Um, so all our flight data is coming from this box. Yeah. So that's where we plug in our flight plans. We plug in our fuel, um, our our weight as well, and it tells us what our weight's going to be, what our fuel load's going to be, and how we get to where we want to be. Also down here is um, our trim setting. So we've got electric trim setting. There's no manual trim on this aeroplane which is oh. something also very different you've always yeah. got a trim an electric wall. trim or and a manual trim yeah. wheel. this one has none of those so both both the primary and the secondary trim are electric autopilot and all our settings are all up here 
Yeah. There's a lot of buttons that you've got here to, to program the airplane to do, make it do what you want to do. So there's buttons everywhere here. Are you actually using all of them or is it just certain ones that you have to use? Majority of the time we're using like all, all the switches are used Yeah. Um, on most flights, depending on whether you've got icing or not. If you don't have icing, then you, you're not generally using much of this stuff. Yeah. Everything else is always used. The buttons on the screens are always used. Um, the TCAS and terrain avoidance is always used and a lot of these ones are also used. So you, you could pretty yeah. well say they're all used. So how do you tell if there's ice on the wings? Yeah, so we'll actually get an ice indication on this because obviously if you look back, you can't really see the wing. So you can't tell too much if you've got ice. So what we have is a little probe that sits underneath the nose of the aircraft and we'll get an ice light if we start getting any icing. Yeah. It'll flash up and tell us we've got icing. So then we've got the ability to put on our bleed air, which um, heats up the wing. Yeah. We've also got um, boots on the um, intake of the engine. So yep. they, they pump up with air and yep. they push the ice off. And then obviously we've got a continuous anti-icing on, um, on the propellers. We've also got heat, uh, windshield heating as well. So these panes will, will heat up to keep it from fogging up and getting ice on it. Yep. So we've got a red warning light because we've got no oil pressure. The cabin, cabin door and the baggage door are both open. So oh. That's where you get a red warning light. The caution light is something's not in the position that it's meant to be in. So hydraulic pressure is associated with a hydraulic pump. Yep. That'll be there if it's if we don't have the hydraulic pump on, which means we don't have brakes and we don't have steering. We need to have it on. You'll work out pretty quick because you can't stop or you can't steer. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you got um, left and right fuel pump and pressure. Obviously, they're a fuel pump switch that we have that we've got to manually have on. Yep. Left and right generator, so we're making sure we've got generating there. Pedo heat um, is critical for this aeroplane, so we always got to run with the pedo heat on. And that'll yeah. also get rid of our stall fail light. Can we talk about the worst case scenario? The engine fails and you have to just glide. So we've got two, two engines. So if we yeah. have a single engine failure, this aeroplane will fly really, really well on one engine. Yeah. So we, we can get to our destination no problem on one engine, um, even at high altitude. So this will hold our, in the 30s, no problem at all on one engine. Wow. Um, if we lose both engines, the glide on this is relatively okay. Um, in comparison to other jets, it's actually quite good. But the probabilities of both going out is pretty slim, right? Very, very slim. I think the only time you're going to have both double engine failures is if you've ran out of fuel yeah. and you've made a very, very bad error if you yeah. got to that point. Because <laughs> this aeroplane takes a lot of fuel, so you're always carrying quite a fair bit of fuel. We actually use this switch after every landing. We have to dump the cabin um, in case there is still some air stuck in the door seal. So if there's yeah. air stuck in the door seal, it makes it hard to get it open. So we actually have to do a dump as part of a checklist item. We do our run-ups, we have a rotary test that we do and a lot of it is um, warning signs. So that's an engine exceed warning. So if we exceed yeah. the engine um, speed, that's, yeah. that noise will happen. Uh, we've got an outsider so we can flash up um, six of these. So if we turn these off, it should pop up again. Oh yeah. So all these have popped up, all the red ones have popped up for us. We've also got lamps so we can test all our lights oh, are working. So you can't you can make sure that there's no bulbs out or anything like that. Yeah. Then we've also got um, a unique one on here is our fire detection. So we can actually put out fires in our engines. Oh, so if what? we get any of these fire warning lights, yeah. that means we've got a fire on board, which will be in the engine bay. If that occurs, we can push a um, fire extinguisher and it'll extinguish the fire. That's in the really engine. cool. It'll do a stall. So we can do, we should do that one. So it's got a caution. The stall fail came on and it'll just take a little bit of time for it to come through. There she goes. Oh, and yeah. that's the stall. So tell us about your role at Matt Hall Racing and what do you guys offer? Yeah, so when I'm not flying, I'm also an operations manager full time as well for Matt Hall yeah. Racing. We offer joy flights where we can take people for an aerobatic experience around Lake Macquarie. Yeah. And that's where we can take you up to 8G so you can experience oh, wow. eight times your body weight, which is something very, very unique. Wow, yeah. We'll uh, take you through loops, barrel rolls, tumbles. So we'll actually throw the plan end over end. And you've also got the corporate jet side of things. How does this work? Yeah, so um, on the weekends I'm flying aerobatics or doing displays and then yeah. during the week we're flying uh, the corporate aircraft and it's a great mix because I get to do best of both worlds. It's something yeah. I've always wanted to do is fly the, the fast aeroplanes but also fly them 
upside down as well. Yeah, yeah. So anywhere that has a tar sealed runway in Australia, you guys can go pick them up and take them anywhere? We certainly can. Yeah. So how do viewers get in contact with you? Yeah, so you can jump on our website, matthillracing.com, and we've yeah. got everything there. Thanks so much for showing us around. It sounds like an awesome operation you guys have here. No problem, thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Emma. Too easy.